We'll start with the prayers. Om Bhadram Karne Pishuniyama Deva Bhadram Pashye Maksha Bhirya Jatra Stirai Rangai Hees Tushtubhagam Sashtanubi Gershe Madeva Hitam Yadayoho Swastina Indro Vrittasrava Swastina Pusha Vishwa Veda Swastina Stakshora Rishtanemi Swastino Brihaspatir Dadato Om Shanti 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 we are studying Mandokya Upanishad and uh, this Upanishad is extremely popular with the students of Vedanta. The reason is it has got two commentaries. One is on this Upanishad Gaudara Paracharya has written a commentary. And then the second commentary is by Shankaracharya on Gaudapada's commentary. So that's why when we study this Upanishad, we are able to understand the fine points which are given in the Upanishads. The Upanishad itself is only 12 mantras, but the Tarikas, the commentary on that makes it very interesting. We are doing three mantras. We have done the first two mantras. We are today going to complete the third mantra. I want to give you a outline of what this content of this Upanishad is. So that you understand the broad vision first. The Upanishad introduces a very unique aspect of this creation. The unique aspect is there is an awareness consciousness principle which is the substratum for the entire universe. Try to understand this next five minutes, what I'm going to say, because this is the gist of the entire Upanishad. If you understand the gist, then you can understand every mantra in this Upanishad. This consciousness is called Turiyam in this Upanishad. Turiya means the fourth state. Normally, we are aware of three states of consciousness, waking, dream, and sleep. Compared to the three states, it is called as the fourth state. So what is the fourth state? The fourth state is, there is Advaitam, there is Turiyam. What is the content of this Turiyam? The content of this Turiyam Avastha is all the three Avasthas, they are all coming and going in this consciousness or awareness or Turiyam. This is the first point you should try to register in a mind. Then this Upanishad becomes very interesting. So what's the first point? There is a substratum for all our experiences. That substratum is called as Turiyam. In that Turiyam, which is an awareness principle, consciousness principle, the three states which we experience, the waking, dream, and sleep, in that awareness, consciousness, these three states are coming and going. Turiyam by itself is changeless. In Sanskrit, we call it nir 
the kara. It is an in eternal principle. This is the second lesson. First lesson, all our experiences are happening in awareness. Number second, this awareness is eternal. It never dies. Suppose you say it is eternal, it is never dies. It means it was never born. So it is birthless, it is deathless. Because it is birthless, it doesn't have a body. There is no physical body for this thurium. And there is no death means if there is no body, there is no death. Second lesson. Third lesson is this entire universe with respect to that thurium it is called as Mithya. Third lesson. What is it? This entire Jagat which we experience including my body, including the mind, everything in this universe is called Mithya. Mithya means it doesn't have independent existence. And what is Satyam? Whenever you talk about Mithya, there is Satyam involved and that Satyam is Turiyam. Okay, so this is the broad vision. I will be repeating this many times during the talks. Because this vision, if you are able to get it, then what happens? You have understood Mandokyo. Mithya means it comes and goes in Turiya. It is an appearance in Turiya. So the waking world is an appearance in Turiya. The dream world is an appearance in Turiya. The sleep experience is also appearance in Turiya. So don't forget the word Turiyam in case you have not understood it. You put a note. I will try to explain it at the end of the talk one more time. If you have understood this broad vision, now let us go to this slide where we stopped last week. Now, where we stopped is this particular portion where we are discussing the last portion of the third mantra. The third mantra is an explanation of the waking state. The first two mantras are giving introduction to Omkara and telling us that the Atma is made up of four parts. Then in the third mantra, the description of the four parts start. Here in this paragraph, Shankaracharya says, this Atma, which exists in all the beings, it should be understood as one. This is a mistake which many other philosophers, they make. As students of Vedanta studying Shankara Bhashyam, we should not make this mistake. We should say that Turiyam Atma is one. It appears as though it is many in different, different bodies. But they are reflections of this Turiyam in different bodies. Now, if the body is Mithya, then the reflection is also Mithya. So, what Isha Vasya Upanishad says is, the one who sees all the being in this Atma, he is a wise person. 
how does the wise person say see this he says everything in this universe is turiyam atma awareness consciousness but what about the bodies which we see the bodies which we experience are mithya prapancha okay so that is what we should understand in this shankaracharya quotes ishavasi upanishad this particular mantra yastu sarvani bhutani atmanyevana anupashyati sarva bhuteshu chaatmanam tatho na viju gupsate very important mantra which talks about the aikyam or the mahavakyam which in, which states that all the jivas are nothing but one turiya atma so if you are wise person you will see this entire world are is existing in consciousness it is rising from consciousness it resolves into consciousness so content is one which is consciousness all the beings are in that atma at the samashti level you see many bodies but what is atma it is the adhisthanam at the deshti level atma is the content of all the bodies that means like all the bodies are in space after this upanishad we should learn to say all the bodies are in awareness consciousness turiyam which is called as turiyam the fourth avastha but later on we will see is it the fourth or is it the only avastha in bhagavad gita the sixth chapter has got two verses which are very very important which are parallelly giving the same idea what does a yogi in meditation see he sees all the beings and the universe is existing in the same atma the one who sees this is called as a gnani the one who sees that he is not separate from paramatma paramatma is also the same consciousness principle i am also the same consciousness principle the entire experiences which i have is coming and going in consciousness so atma is seen as the content of this entire universe atma is seen as the adhisthanam adhisthanam means substrate so it is this atma we are trying to understand more and more so if the wise person sees this as it is mentioned in the ishavasi upanishad or in bhagavad gita can he ever be deluded that is the question which ishavasi is asking and upanishad says one can never be deluded in life because all the time you say i am that you i am that turiyam brahma i am the turiyam atma this keeps on ringing in your mind i am that and this is the ultimate absolute principle of this universe itself what a great teaching is our upanishad you can never ever find any teaching which is equivalent to what the upanishads teach us about the universe about the creator about our own essence so upasamhruta means it is substantiated corroborated restated reinforced and what is reinforced the idea that deshti and samashti are not two but it is advaitam deshti means individual and the totality means the samashti they both 
have to be resolved as one principle. Atma ekatva darshanam. Very important sentence of Shankaracharya's commentary, this particular paragraph. I have mentioned this also as the central theme of the entire Mandokya Upanishad. Keep, re keep repeating this one sentence. Atma ekatva darshanam. In English, what does it mean? It means there is one Atma which is called as Thuri Atma which is the substratum and the content of this universe and that Atma is my nature. What do you mean by my nature? I have to learn to drop the Sthula Shariram the gross body, sukshma shariram, the subtle body, the causal shariram, which is karana shariram. From this body, I learned to drop all of them. In Taitri Upanishad language, we have to say, drop the pancha koshas. In Mandukya language, we say, drop the avastha trayam. What happens when you cognitively drop them in your understanding? You reach the core of your personality, which is called as Atma Ekatvam. Nobody who can understand in this way will miss nobody. The teaching is very clear. This Atma is all pervading. It is ekam. Only one. And ekam means what? Non-dual. There is no second consciousness in the world. Mandukya Upanishad says in the seventh mantra, the, the, the brilliant mantra, which is the center of Mandukya Upanishad. We are going to study the central, this particular mantra, we are going to uh, do almost like 200 verses on this mantra. One mantra. So, the Bauda philosophy which talks about Shunyavadin does not accept Veda. Therefore, they end up in nothingness. Even Yoga or Sankhya, they all end up with wrong interpretation of the Veda. You can study the Veda, but after studying all the mantras, suppose you say there is only Dvaitam in this world, there is a world and I am the experiencer of the world. There are two things in this world. That means you have not understood the man, the Upanishads. Suppose you have understood the Upanishad and you say there is only one Atma, Anatma is a mithya which appears and goes. It disappears, it appears, it disappears, it appears. Where does it appear and disappear? In the substratum which is called as Atma. So when you don't forget this Atma, then what happens? You are called as a wise person. So, the third verse which we have seen so far, I am going to revise this from this slide onwards. This is where we stopped last week. And I want to, because this mantra is the, uh, is the, is the section where Shankaracharya writes a big commentary. For the fourth and the fifth mantra or the sixth mantras, the commentary slides are smaller. So in the first mantra, we have said that there is an individual jiva and there is a samashti ishvara. The samashti ishvara is saptangaha. It has got seven limbs. 
the individual has got 19 parts. What are the seven limbs and what are the 19 parts? If you ask, you we have done this, but I will just explain to you, reminding you, the seven limbs are, number one, the head of the Ishvara is the Swarga. First, we will do the Ishvara, the totality. In this totality, you have to see this whole universe belongs to one cosmic uh, divine principle. Whose head is Swarga? Whose head is the heaven? The eyes of this, that cosmic personality is the sun, Surya, number two. Number one is the head, which is heaven. Number two is the second one is the eyes, which are the sun. The third is prana, the vayu tattvam in the samashti. This is the third limb of Ishvara, vayu, swargaha, suryaha, vayu. Then the fourth limb is the mouth, which is Agni. See, by and large, all the five elements are coming into this seven limbs. So Agni is the fourth limb, which is the mouth of Ishvara. This is a, <clears throat> this is a depiction in most of the Upanishads. The cosmic personality is given this type of description. Chandogya Upanishad has got a verse which describes this seven limbs. So Mandukya uh, Gaudapada Acharya has taken, borrowed from Chandogya Upanishad and he is saying in this Upanishad it is called as the Samashti Ishwara with seven limbs. We have finished four. What is the fifth one? The fifth one is the Akasha. Akasha is this central body, the broad chest. Then we come to the ocean, the water principle, which is the bladder of Ishwara. This is the sixth one. The last one is Prithvi, which, is, which are the legs of Ishwara. So the seven limbs are number one, Swargaha, number two, Suryaha, number three, Vayu, number four, Agni, number five, Akasha, number six, Ocean, number seven, Prithvi. Okay, so these are the seven lips. Whenever you want to talk about, whenever you want to meditate on this Yushwara, you can use this seven limb principle and in your own mind, you can describe Ishwara in this form. Vishnu Sahasnamam also uses a similar format. Bhupada. That verse is a meditation verse, Jhanam. You use it for Vishnu Dhyana. What about the Yashti now? Now let's come to the individual like all the Jeevas. Now in the case of individual, the Upanishad says that there are 19 uh, doorways, gateways, by which that consciousness expresses and experiences the universe. That consciousness through the seven limbs experiences the Samashti Jagat. The individual, he cannot experience the whole cosmos. So that consciousness expresses in the Jiva's body. What do you find in the Jiva? In the body of all of us, what do you find? There are gateways. There are doors. 
by which we experience and we interact with the world. So the 19 parts by which a jiva experiences the world, the gross universe is called, I will explain to you the 19 parts. Number one, jnana indriyas. Pancha jnana indriyas. Five. Five karma indriyas. Five plus five, ten over. Pancha prana. Fifteen. Then antakkaranam. Antakkaranam consists of four. Manaha, buddhihi, ahankara, chittam. All this is Tathva Bodha. But the same Tathva Bodha has been put in this Upanishad as 19 gateways or the doors for a jiva to live in this world. The prana is the maintenance principle. It maintains the body. Without prana, you and I cannot live. Then, once the body is alive, kept alive, what does it do? It ex experiences the world through the five sense organs. It receives the stimuli, which is called as the input. And then what happens? It gives output. The output is in the form of karma indriyas. So, pancha prana is the maintenance principle. Pancha jnana indriyas are the input principle. Pancha karma, karma, karma indriyas are the output principle. Now, it is not enough when you have this pancha prana, pancha karma indriyas and pancha jnana indriyas. You also need an antakkarana. Antakkarana is the seed. It is a seat where the karta and the bhokta jiva sits. The doer and the enjoyer of all this, the body, which uh, all the transactions of the body, it doesn't exist in the karma indriyas or jnana indriyas or in the pranas. It exists in the antakha. In the antakharanam, the four parts are extremely important. Number one, manaha, the seat of all our emotions. Number two, buddhihi. Buddhi is the intellect, which is a determining, determining principle. Ahankara means the ego. I am doing, I am doing, I am important, I am rich, I am poor, I am very, very famous all every time you use aham 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 it is nothing but ahamkara it is a reflection of that consciousness it is not the reality in vivek chodamani last week we saw the meditation it is only a chaya and we give so much importance to this chaya chaya means shadow shadow is just an appearance so all our life is purely an appearance from and the last portion of the Antakaranam is Chittam. Chittam means memory. Without memory, you cannot survive in this world. Because you must remember, I have eaten my food or not. I have gone to the office or not. It's a memory function. It is a function of the inner instrument called as the Antakaranam. Okay, this is the broad thing which happens during the waking state. So many things I have explained now. But all that we know, but we don't know in this format. What Upanishad does is, it gives us a model. It gives us a format in which we have to see our experiences in this world. So the first experience is about waking and that is what we are seeing in this third mantra.
there was a debate which said where the Purubakshi came and asked, this is the revision portion. I'm revising what we have discussed so far in the last eight sessions. Today is the ninth session of Mandalika. So what we have done is there was an opponent who said, how can you equate a Vyashti Jiva with a small body with the cosmos, which is limitless? Then Shankaracharya said that the, the equation, you don't take it at the Vachyata level, but you have to do Lakshya. What is behind this body is called as Lakshyata, which is consciousness. What is behind this universe is Lakshyata at the Samashti level, which is consciousness. So at the consciousness level, we have to equate it. Therefore, Vishwa is equated to Virat, not at the Vachyartha level, but at the Lakshyartha level. Right in the beginning of the third of the first Pada, this waking state is called as the first Pada, which is called as Bahish Pragna. Whatever we experience in the external world is the first pada, first quarter of that consciousness, which is called as Turiyam. So the aim of Upanishad is not to talk individually about a Vishwa and a Virat, Taijasa and a Hiranyagarbha, Pragna and Antaryami, but what lies behind all the six principles which we experience in this world? And that is consciousness. At the consciousness level, there is no difference. There is no division between Vyashti and Samashti. Individual and the totality. As you go from gross to subtle, you will find gross and subtle are the products, the karyam. At the karana level, everything is one lump of consciousness. At consciousness level, equation is possible. Vyashti, Samashti, Bhira is not there. So, very important principle you should understand. Every time you are... See, many seekers, many students have this, have this uh, doubt. Upanishad sometimes says, you are Paramatma. Student gets very, very uh, confused. How can I be Paramatma? So student lives with that doubt throughout his life. Many times, many, uh, almost 25 years of study of Vedanta also, there are some students who have not understood what is the meaning of this equation because they have not done Mahavakya Vichara. They have studied Upanishad. They have, studied, they have gone through so many lectures. This Upanishad, that Upanishad, so many things. But they have not gone to the depth of the Upanishad. They have never studied. I have, I have known several students hundreds of students across the globe. They have done Upanishads, but they have not done Bhashyam. Only when you do Bhashyam, you go to the depth of what the Upanishad wants to convey. This vision of Upanishadic vision, you will never get if you only study the mantra portion. Okay. In the Prathamapada, the Upanishad, even though you can't say directly there is oneness between Vyashti and Samashti, Upanishad compromises and says there is oneness because ultimately in the third Pada, the Upanishad will say all what you experience is the causal body, which is Karana Avastha. In that Karana Avastha, everything becomes resolved. 
So Upanishad deliberately compromises and equates Vishwa and Vira. At the first Pada is. Because then you will know even in the second Pada, you have to do the same thing. Even in the third Pada, you have to do the same. That means Deshti, you have to merge with the Samashti. In Taitri Upanishad also, yesterday we did the same thing. Pasankarmanya. After all the Pancha Koshas, where do all the Pancha Koshas they resolve in? They resolve in the Turiya Atma. Same thing we are studying here in Mark. So, at the Turiyam level, there is no Bheda. At the Vishwa level, there is Bheda. Nirvana Shatkam, you should keep both the, verses, both the parts in your mind. The first portion is the negation of the Sthula Shariram, Sukshma Shariram, Karan Shariram. The second portion is to assert after you have negated Mano, Buddhi, Ahankara, Chittani, Naha. Then what do you say? Shidananda Rupaha, Shivoham, Shivoham. We all celebrated Shivaratri. What is the meaning of this Shivratri? Shivratri means it is when a person realizes his oneness with that Shiva principle in this universe. When you and I drop the subject-object duality and realize this Turiya Atma that moment is called as Shiv Ratri, which means your ignorance, which is a Ratri, which is a darkness, has gone from your life. And what has substituted, what has been replaced, that is what is called as Shivaha. That Shivaha is auspicious. That Shivaha is the same Turiya. In the seventh mantra of uh, Mantukya Upanishads, it says Shivam Shantam Advaitam, which is the ultimate substratum for this entire universe. From the Vedanta angle, Shivratri means the moment you have your intellect has discovered. That Turiyam principle in your own mind, that is called as Shivaratri. So, in the, uh, on, in, on a Shivaratri day, when you meditate on this Shiva principle, this Turiyam will shine for you. And it will tell you, this is what it is, that's all. This is what I have to be known from the Upanishads. That Turiya will, 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 will shine and it will you will discover that Turiyam in your own mind. That is what is called as Shivaratri. So, now, when you do this type of meditation, you should remember the two verses about, of the Bhagavad Gita, which is, the Sarva Bhutastamatmanam Sarva Bhutani Chatmani Ikshate Yoga Yuktatma Sarvatra Samadarshanaha Yoma Pashati Sarvatra Sarvatra Chamai Pashati Tasyahamna Pranashyami Sachamena Pranashati. It only means that know this consciousness principle, which is the ultimate absolute nature of the universe and of your own body-mind complex. When you, when you say, I am Turiyam, then you can easily say, I alone put a Vesham, a dress of the Panchakoshas. I alone put the dress 
of the avastha trayam and experience this jagrat avastha swapna avastha sushupya avastha therefore i can claim i am vishwa and vira okay now there is another language which is used for this <coughs> aikyam that is you divide the universe into three portions adhyatmika adi daivika and adi bhautika see universe can be divided in different different ways in different different contexts shankaracharya here divides it into adhyatmika and adi daivika to explain the principle of turiya arth what does he say he says this ekatva atma you can realize by the following analysis in this universe the the cosmos is called as virat the body is called as vishwa the cosmic principle is the devata the controller and the individual body is the controlled vayu devata is the samashti but that vayu controls the vayu principle in this body agni principle is the devata in the samashti the same agni is in your stomach aham vaishvanaro bhutva praninam deha mashitah chapter 15 this verse it says vaishvanara that virat is there in my body what is the function of that vaishvanara in this body it digests the food so controller is adi daivika principle controlled is the adhyatmika principle adhyatmika adi daivika are put together by adi bhautika bhautika means the pancha bhutas pancha bhutas are controlled by the devatas the devatas they control the pancha bhutas in this sharira mods okay see how how magnificent is our vision of the veda the more you study the veda you will you will appreciate how high the see, the rishis could envision this entire universe by our own self we will never be able to have this vision but when we study and we understand then what happens this mantras of shankaracharya help us to get the same vision which he had after studying mandukya upanishad which gaudapada had after the, he studied the mandukya upanishad in the next commentary of shankaracharya he says he takes a verse from the uh, uh, chandogya upanishad which is chapter 5 section 12 second verse i have got the uh, verse later on i'll show it to you where vyashti and samashti are equated so this is the mantra what it means is by doing upasana your mind will get the oneness of this cosmic self with the individual self in chandogya upanishad five chapters are all based on upasana and vedanta is in 6th 7th and 8th so this fifth chapter is a upasana chapter so there the some disciples go to a kshatriya king and the kshatriya king says go and do upasana on the virat then what happens same in the virat we saw all these portions head eye central body bladder legs and all that 
which is the Swarga, Suryaha, space, ocean, Prithvi. Then they all did that. And the Vishnu Sahasramam, I told you before, the second verse is a Dhyana Shloka. Bhupada Yasya Nabi, most of uh, those who, and, who know Vishnu Sahasramam, who chant this, you will remember this particular verse. And here also, if you see the meaning, it will be a very similar meaning of the cosmic principle. So, in this Chandogya Upanishad, the Kshatriya kings, he's, he told the Upasakas that you meditate on the totality. What did the disciple do? He mistook that and he said, they took each limb and they meditated as that is the part of Ishwar. Here in the commentary of Shankaracharya, he says that the correct way to do this Upasana is to take the entire Virat as one cosmic entity with seven limbs. Don't take it as each limb and meditate. Take it as a totality and then you will get the vision of this universe which is called as Virat. Why, why do we do this Upasana? The reason is ultimately your mind has to get the, the broad vision. It has to expand. Normally our mind is very limited. We think of this, we think of that small, small things in life and that is all our intellect does throughout life. But here, the Upanishad wants you to broaden the vision. That means you have to expand. Expansion of the mind is required. Therefore, cosmic samashti upasana is recommended to make the mind broad. To make... There are two things which are important. One is expansion of the mind and the second is focusing or concentration of the mind. When you get both the aptitudes in your mind, this knowledge will definitely click in your mind. Suppose it is not clicking, one of the two is missing. Either you're using the focus, you're losing out on the focusing front, or you have not expanded on the vision, on the broadness, expansion of the mind. Brahadanik Upanishad, Madhu Brahmana which is the second chapter, the fifth section, Shankaracharya quotes here. See how beautiful Shankaracharya is. He wants to talk about the Virat and the Vishwa Aikya, oneness. So he brings the Chandogya Upanishad. He brings the Brahadhanik Upanishad. And then there it says that at the Stula level, there is oneness. At the Sukshna Shari level, level also, there is oneness. And if you don't see this oneness, but you keep on seeing the differences, you will always have samsara. Samsara means seeing division in this world. Duality. Dvaitam is samsara. Advaitam is moksha. This is the formula. Once again, I repeat. Dvaitam is samsara. Advaitam is moksha. How do you go to Advaitam? By resolution of the Dvaitam. How do you resolve the... Uh, uh, how do you resolve this Dvaitam? By intellectually understanding two things. Number one, Dvaitam is an appearance. Number two, Dvaitam does not have independent existence. It depends on Atma. Remember these two principles, you will come to Advaita Atma, which is the substratum for the Dvaitam. So, Dvaitam is Mithya. It has to be dropped. It is taken and dropped. Taken and dropped. 
taken means upadanam. Hanam means drop. This taking and dropping is what Shankaracharya says in the third chapter of Mandukya Upanishad. He brings and he brings the essence of consciousness in the third chapter. But here we must understand, even in Brahadanika Upanishad, we talk about Aikyam, oneness between the Virat, the individual, and the total at three levels. At the gross, subtle, and costly. When do I see this Advaitam? Do I all do I have this experience or not? Dvaita Upashama. Upashama means resolution. This word Upashamam comes in the seventh mantra. Shankaracharya uses it in this mantra itself so that we all get used to the words and their meanings. During sleep state, the Dvaitam resolves. In the dream state, partially the Dvaitam resolves. We will see in the next phase, when we see the dream state, we will understand this better. So, Viraja Ekatvam Upalakshanartham. That means, it is a clue to take the oneness in the first level itself, so that we can, at the final level, at the Thuriyam level, it is, becomes very easy. I have already learned in the, in the third mantra, I have learned the oneness of the, of the entire cosmos. In the fourth mantra also, I have learned the oneness. In the fifth and the sixth also, I learned the oneness. Therefore, in the seventh mantra, when the, when the, the Upanishad says, you are that Thuri Avasa, it becomes very easy. So this is the Madhu Brahmana words which Shankaracharya quotes. In this section, there are 10 or 12 mantras in Brahadanyaka Upanishad where all the Panchabhutas are taken up for meditation. And what do they say? They say that this earth is nothing but an immortal being. That means there is a devata behind the earth. That devata is immortal. And the same immortal devata is also expressing in this body, in my body. There is oneness between the samashti and Vyashti. Samashti devata is the earth principle, complete the earth principle, but my body also is, has got the earth principle. My sthula sharidam is made up of earth. The content of this body, the uh, upadana karanam of the sharidam is the earth element. So behind the sthula gola comes in the individual sharidam, there is a sukshma sharidam, there is a power behind this eyes. Behind us, ears, there is a power. The power is called as sushma. The ear, the external uh, equipment which we see, visible portion is the golaka. Now, similarly in the prapancha, when we see the earth, the, I see the earth which is cross, which is like the golaka. But behind, behind that earth principle, there is a power which controls it. That sukshma power is called as hiranyagarbha. At the individual level, it is called as taijasa. The power behind all the sense organs of knowledge, all the organs of action, the power behind them is the subtle power, which is called as Taijasa. At the individual level, at the total level, it is called as Hiranyagarbha. Hiranyagarbha, we say Suryaha. How does the sun shine so brightly? Day in and day out, I see the same sun. There must be some power which controls it. 
that is what is called as the hiranyagarbha the first born out of brahmachi now both this tejasa and hiranyagarbha they have the reflection of consciousness therefore they are tejo mayaha atmaka purushaha this is an introduction to the next verse slowly shankaracharya introduces the next verse because in the next verse we are going to talk about the subtle subtle mind now upadis are different upadi means the, the the medium of transaction are different between the subtle body and the subtle universe because one is small in size another is very big in size devata always refers to the sukshma tejo maya pratibimba chaita see right in the beginning of the talk i said there is one turiya that turiya by itself cannot experience this universe it expresses as the samashti and vyashti and in the samashti and the vyashti there is a pratibimba there is a reflection of that i have to look at the pratibimba the reflection and infer the bimba chaitanya infer i have to say that if there is such a power behind the sun there must be one power which controls the entire cosmos which is called as turiyam so there is a bhagwan there is a god principle who listens to our prayers who is a sentient principle that same god is behind the body and behind the entire universe so there is aikyam there is oneness at the sukshma level at the subtle body level there is a aikyam at the causal level the third uh, aikyam means the third oneness is at the causal level what happens at the causal level everything becomes one when you go to sleep the body in which you sleep is called as pragna the body in which the universe sleeps is called as antaryami ishvara now that sleep condition is a causal form in which there is no division at all you can't see you don't know the difference between a jiva and a jiva jiva and a jagat jiva and ishvara no differences can be noticed because it is the causal karan avastha karana means where the karyam differences are resolved see how beautiful shankaracharya is he is giving us the definition of karana he tells us what is the meaning of karana karana is what it is where there are no differences and what is karyam whenever i see differences jiva and jiva jiva and jagat jiva and ishvara that is called as karyam the product so our causal state sleep state is the karana avastha and jagrat and the uh, uh, swapna avastha are the effect the products of that karanam which is called as karyam now karyam and karanam are one and the same for example if we have i'm going to do the meditation today on this particular topic which uh, I, i i will come to that later on but what the karanam the the clay alone appears as the pot the gold alone appears as a ring ring is a karyam gold is the karanam so the ekatvam which we all experience is nothing but it is expressing as the bahutvam in the jagrat and the sopna avas this this uh, analysis of shankaracharya of the first verse is amazing 
he brings out all the ideas and he tells us that this is the essence of the whole Upanishad. In the sixth mantra of the Upanishad, Shankaracharya quotes this. He says that in the sixth uh, mantra, he talks about the Karana Avastha, where everything is resolved. And what is Turiyam? Turiyam is beyond Karanam and Karya. It is not at all affected by the Karanam or the Karya. That is, the, that is how we get moksha. Moksha is not being the karanam. Moksha is not being the karya. Moksha is knowing the turiyam, which is beyond karanam and karya. It is evident because that moksha is self-evident that pure consciousness is always present in which this karanam and karya avasthas are coming and going. Karana avastha is called as nirvisesha avastha. There is no visesha. There is no differentiation of a product. In the waking state, we see viseshas. We see differences. But in the sleep state, we know that the entire universe is resolved into one Advaita Avastha. Okay. So, purpose of discussion Evans Chasati means Sarva Vyasti and Samasti are the same at the first level, second level and the third level. So, when we do this Upasana, we have to resolve the first individual Vishwa into Virat, that is one Aikya, micro and macro, is one Chaitanya. Similarly, at the subtle level, we say it is one Chaitanya. Causal level, one Chaitanya. Therefore, ultimately, when you say, Mayeva Sakalam Jatam, May Sarvam Pratishtidam, that means, in me, the consciousness, Turiyam alone, everything exists and everything gets dissolved. That locus where everything gets dissolved and everything originates, that locus is called as non-dual Brahman. Turiya Brahman. The same 19th verse of Kaivalya Upanishad is the equivalent verse of the 7th verse of Mandukya Upanishad. So when you resolve Vyashti and Samashti, what remains is Advaita Chaitanyam Bhavati, my Swarupam. It is always Siddham. It is always there. But I didn't know that that is my nature. So when Dvaitam is resolved, in your own mind, you must say, there is an Advaita Atma where it gets resolved. That Atma, now by studying this Mandukya Upanishad, I have realized that Atma happens to be my real nature. What about this uh, body, mind, word, my, uh, you know, I am the father, mother, sister, all that is mithya. It will be there for a hundred years. But Advaita Atma is eternal. Do you want to live for a hundred years or do you want to live an eternal life? The choice is yours. If you want to live an eternal life, come to Mandukya Upanishad, understand Turiya Avastha, Turiya Atma, you will experience eternity as your nature. In Sushupti and Samadhi, we, can, we cannot get moksha because it is a temporary state. But through Advaita Jnanam, through the Advaita Turiya Vastu, 
which I come to know, I can remain eternally forever in that vastu as my soul. So Patanjali could not come to Advaitam. This is the Yoga Shastra people. Merely Ubashamam, which we all get in our sleep state, is a natural state. But that is not uh, that, that that is not what Upanishad wants to teach. Then Upanishad would have said, "All of you go to sleep. You realize your Advaita Atma, and that is your Atma, and that lesson is over." No, that is a temporary state. What Upanishad reveals is Advaita Vastu, which is not a state, but it is a permanent, eternal, existent principle. If I come to know that vastu, thuriya vastu, I am ever mukta and that is the adhishthanam, the resolution ground for the entire cosmos. Here Shankaracharya says, Patanjali, in spite of understanding Yoga Shastra, he could not come to the conclusion of Advaita Vastu. In Bhagavad Gita, there's another two verses, which are earlier I talked about the sixth chapter. Now I'm now Shankaracharya gives that another two verses. The ninth chapter, fourth verse. Mastani Sarva Bhutani Nachaham Teshvavastitaha. Then the very next verse. He says, Nachamastani Bhutani Pashyame Yoga Maishwara. What does it mean? It means that you see duality. While seeing duality itself, your vision must be on the Advaita Vastu, which is always there, changeless principle. The first verse of this ninth, uh, fourth verse will say, the world is pervaded by me. That means I, without me, there is no world. Then in the next verse, he says, that means there is no world. When you look at it from Paramatika Drishti, Advaita Atma alone is. Therefore, Upashamam, the resolution, Upashamam means what? Resolution. You can do it by the way of Dhyanam, or you can do it by jnanam. By dhyanam, you can get resolution which is called as samadhi, but that is temporary. But by jnanam, when you get the resolution by understanding the thuriya vastu, then it is called as sublation. That sublation is what is Shankara's idea of this commentary. He wants us to sublate the waking dream and sleep state and say what really exists is this Turiya Atma. So with this, I conclude the third verse. The first, what is the Anvaya? What is the meaning of this third verse? The meaning of this third verse is the first quarter of this pure Turiya Atma is called as Vaishwanaraha. Here we are not talking about the individual. Here, here immediately the, the Upanishad clearly says it is Vaishwanara. It doesn't say Vishwa. So the Upanishad idea is to for you to look at the Samashti. The consciousness principle in the first pada is the samashti principle of Vaishwanaraha. And that is whose field is the waking state itself is the whole field of that one consciousness. Which has got, when it looks outward, it has got seven limbs at the samashti level, 19 mouths at the individual level. All this is for what? To experience the gross world, which is the first pada. Okay. So with this, I have finished the first volume. 
next week i'm going to start the second volume from the fourth mantra onwards the second volume all of you have got the notes if you have not got these notes write to me uh, i will send you the notes i have already finished almost the three chapters the third chapter is coming to an end but i have finished almost all three chapters but don't go into those levels just go through the first two uh, volumes so that you can revise whenever you have time if you understand upanishad one upanishad mandukya upanishad properly with this shankara bhashyam you do not need any other study for the spiritual science okay i will start the fourth mantra next week and the fourth mantra has got about about uh, 60s uh, 30 40 slides and then the fifth mantra has got uh, another from the fourth mantra onwards we will be going slightly faster four five six there are uh, three mantras in the next uh, 150 slides finish we'll finish three four mantras then we will come to the la the seventh mantra seven mantra is the ultimate that is one mantra you have to by heart you by heart it keep it with you even if you don't understand doesn't matter sometime in your life you will remember that mantra and you will come back to this obligation okay so with this i will close today's talk on mandukya upanishad oh ಪೂರ್ಣವದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದೇ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾಥಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವ ವಸಿಷ್ಯದೆ ಓ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 there are two three messages in the chat board i will answer that first navin is asking what is the difference between thuriyam and atma each and every creature in the world has only one thuriyam then the next question what is the causal body okay so the first thing is thuriyam and atma they mean the same thing thuriyam is atma thuriyam is brahman all the three names are synonymous it is one vastu when i refer to the thuriyam thuriyam means consciousness when i refer to that consciousness with reference to the body individual body your body my body anybody's body it is called as atma when it is referring to the whole cosmos it is called as brahman then it is not referring to the atma which is the individual body or the cosmic body by itself it is called as thuriyam now is it clear yeah navin uh are you are you are you clear about the first question and the answer Shan, uh, shanmugam just unmute everybody so that they can uh, they can unmute themselves and they can reply so navin you can unmute yourself and you can reply if you are uh, i can see that you are there you can unmute yourself and answer okay the next yeah navin yeah understood uh, 
Yeah, thank you. Good. So at the individual level, Atma. Total level, Brahman. When you are not referring to either the body or the uh, cosmos, which is what you are when you are asleep, it is called as Thuriyam. In that state of Thuriyam, there is no body or there is no world. But you alone as Thuriyam, pure consciousness, you exist. Good. Next question, causal body. Mandokya Upanishad will explain the causal body, the causal state in the fifth and the sixth mudra. So I suggest you wait for the fifth mantra and the sixth mantra explanation. But in short, I will tell you what it is. Causal body is our own body when we are in the sleep state. In the dream state, it is called as subtle body. We are with our subtle body in the dream state. We are with our gross body in the waking state. In the sleep state, it is called as causal body. What is the content of this causal body? Number one, all the punya, papa, karma, palams are the content of causal body. From that causal body only, the subtle body emerges and the gross body emerges. This is the structure of our own personality. Causal body is invisible. You can only know it from Upanishads. That you have a causal body, I have a causal body. The world has a causal prapancha. What is the causal prapancha? All the punya papa karmas of all the jivas who have to exhaust in this shristi, the prara, the karmas, karma phalams, is the causal state of the universe. This causal state also changes from Srishti to Srishti. Okay? You have to know the causal body at the individual level. You have to know the causal body at the total level. In short, you should understand it is the seed condition of all the gross bodies. What you see in the waking state is only the gross body which you can see. You can see your fingers, your hands. But in the, in the causal body, you can't see the differences in your body. They all become undifferentiated, whatever you may call it, undifferentiated substance, which is the seed condition of all the jivas. Okay, Naveen, is it clear? Uh, yes, it's clear. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Rama is asking, uh, please send volume to, okay, uh, we have sent this volume today in WhatsApp. In case you are not in the WhatsApp, maybe you may not have seen it. Or if you, have, if you are in the WhatsApp group, you can see in today's, uh, uh, we have circulated the Vashyam today. Uh, but we will uh, we will send you in case you have not you, if you are in the email grow then tomorrow when you get this uh, we will send you the volume too okay if you still don't receive it within two three days you write to me I will send you a personal thank you sir yeah thank thank you Rama uh, there are no other questions in the dash in the uh, in the uh, chat board now. Uh, Shama, you are asking. Can you uh, you can ask your question, Shama? Uh, Shekharji, uh, Hari Om. Yeah, yeah. Hari. I'm, I'm afraid there is no question because after your 
uh, talk and after the meditation, uh, the mind is for the moment in a complete shantam state, you know. But, uh, but I just wanted to share just the reflection while the class was going on. Yeah, so a thought which was there. So this is, I wrote it down. Known to unknown, known to known, travel you must. So from one little knowledge, you're going to another little knowledge. Travel you must to yet unknown, Turiyam Atman Brahman. And then travel you need not, because the travel ends there, no? Travel you need not. Because there is no known or unknown. No longer there is this and that. For all that is but one Brahman. Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam, Satchit, Ananda. Om Tat Sat. That's it. Finished. Very good. You have put, you have put almost everything into one small little uh, poem. Fantastic. Just, Very. just came amazing. at the end of the talk here. Beautiful. It, it, Thank you then, so much. I'm you, ever so you, grateful. You, you contemplate more on what we have listened. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, from what I can gather from what you are saying is you are able to appreciate the Vedanta much, much more better than what you were three years ago. And the traveling doesn't seem too tedious and too onerous because I was fighting with myself, you know. Yeah. Now I am not fighting any. Good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Venkatesh, you, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I was just saying, today's meditation, Viveka Chudamani is so amazing, actually. Sometimes when I see uh, Viveka Chudamani, some of these verses, I feel really thrilled, actually. The <laughs> first word itself, Sarvadharam, mm -hmm. Sarvadharam is uh, every... Kar in, karanam is every karyam is dissolved into karyam actually. Simple. I mean, the way Sankarajaya has put it so beautifully, the whole mantra itself is very great. In that mantra, each word has got such a significance. Uh, it's really amazing. I mean, Vivek Chudamani and uh, Nirvana Satakam, both are two extraordinary to do meditation point of view. But I have observed one important feature actually. Particularly after going through Upanishads and all, the intellect gets so sharpened. And if we do Viveka Chudavani, Viveka Chudavani, everything is said from the point of that uh, ultimate, absolute. Absolute is uh, like Sarva Vastu Prakasa, Sarva Dhara, Sarva Jisthi. Everything is with reference to the subject. The extraordinary qualities are the subject, eternal. And when we do Nirvana Satakam, everything is negated, which is from the point of uh, object, actually. Like uh, this entire universe is nothing. You are neither this, you are neither that, 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 all that. So that is another way of uh, putting things. Two different ways of uh, approaching. So, I mean, both are two extraordinary, actually. Particularly, sometimes I listen to Nirvana Satakam, uh, Sivoham and all, when it says, you are not this, you are not that, none. So, Whatever we experience is an object, actually. An objectless awareness is what is subject. That is what Nirvana Satya. But Viveka Chodhapani, particularly after doing uh, Upanishad study and all, when we are with that uh, ultimate Adishtanam, and when we do meditation, it really invokes uh, a very special feature. So it's, it's really good. Very yeah. lovely. Yeah, that's why, uh, you know, the uh, these these meditations are all linked to what we are studying. Yeah. That's why it's called as Vedantic meditation, and they are extremely powerful. Very, very powerful. Very, powerful. And yeah. very, very powerful because it can burn your vasanas. You see, the, the purpose of meditation is you can burn your vasanas, and when you burn your vasanas, what happens is your mind becomes more lighter and lighter. And the more lighter the mind becomes, the more sattvic it becomes. And the more sattvic it becomes, it understands the Upanishad with much more clarity. Yeah. See, see okay. that is what you are expressing today. 
You see, because of your continuous systematic study of for the last eight, 10 years, you have been studying Vedanta uh, with me. And, uh, you know, so you, your mind has really absorbed the knowledge. And today you are you are experiencing experiencing that the phalam of that knowledge. You are experiencing it's an inward experience. You can't put it, but then you, you know that I am able to understand this Upanishadic mantra so well now. This is what happens when somebody studies consistently for a few years. Very good. I'm very happy to hear what you're saying. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anybody else has any other questions? Okay. If there are no other questions, then uh, I will close for the day. And then uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you very and, much. Dennis. Thank you. I'll agree. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. 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 Thank you.